Veterans, military, today we're going to be talking about the difference between an award-winning claim versus absolute garbage. Uh, also, like, share, subscribe, comment, comment down below. Let me know y'all stories. If y'all have a similar situation, let us know. Share, share, sharing is caring. Ah, so first of all, I know we all a little, little riled up since Trump won an Iowa caucus yesterday, but hey, let's, let's get back on track. Let's get back on track. And I know you're excited about them damn bills, as always. But when it comes to identifying half-assed claim, you know, you, I mean, you should know if you're putting in half-assed work. So we can take me for an example. Yeah, I was there. I was there as well. So when I put in a claim, my first VA claim, I put in for back, you know, lumbar sacral strain, low back pain, whatever the case may be. This was back in 2017 put it in at a you know poor piss poor personal statement my medical evidence it was in my service treatment record however i didn't pull it out i assumed the va was going to help me uh i had some buddy statements too they were just like hey give him benefits type deal didn't have a diagnosis but i did have um x-rays i had mris i had substantial medical treatment that should have been sufficient enough for rating purposes back in 2017 then when I got denied, I was denied due to a lack of insurance complaints, which I know I had lack due to a lack of a diagnosis, which I didn't have that. However, VA has a duty to assist. So with that being said, necessarily, you don't need a diagnosis going into the VA disability claims process. However, it's best you have one to minimize the risk of getting denied due to a lack of one because they could just throw it in there and you know try to bullshit hey you didn't have any in-service complaints well yes i did here you go i submitted that information i submitted everything in and the va they gave me a call back then i didn't know what a cmp exam was i didn't know i had to go in to an examination in order to you know receive a VA rating and or compensation, whatever the case may be. So they kept calling, kept calling, kept calling. And then eventually I went in, but I went in for something completely different. It wasn't for my lumbosacral strain. It was for something else. And the VA denied me. Fast forward to 2022. That's when up until that point from 2020 to 2022, I was doing a lot of research. Cool. Gucci. And I pulled all of my insurance complaints. I redeveloped my personal statement to what capture my symptomology, my diagnosis that I went out and got current day diagnosis. And with the symptomology, the symptomology associated with the percentage in which I'm trying to obtain x-rays, MRIs, detailed MRIs without contrast, without contrast. Um, you can do with or without contrast. It doesn't matter. Um, MRIs, MRIs is going to show some things. Um, buddy statements was good. Physical treatment, you know, physical therapy as well. So as well as I was able to add on secondaries along with that supplemental. So I was initially denied and then fast forward, you know, I, don't, I waited long because I, I got tired of the VA claims process. You know, I only did it once, twice, but I was always denied. I was always denied. And you just can't expect to submit shit fucking documents and for the VA to give you, you know, 50%, 200%, you walking around looking at that motherfucker, you know, the Pope over here, oh, uh, looking all Gucci with it. No, you, you got to put in some work, put in some work. There's not going to be no amount of bills coming out, no amount of COLA increases that's going to contribute to you increasing your own VA disability rating. You got to do the work yourself because at the end of the day, there's more veterans not service connected receiving any compensation versus the ones who are receiving it and you know with that being said there's a lot of room for growth there's a lot of room to you know get your shit together get get the medical evidence you need go into treatments go to the doctor the doctor should be your friend yeah there's some bad ones out there however find one that's willing to help you out to build that medical evidence because if you're with one who's not doing who's not doing the necessary inf like doing the bare minimum like writing your notes down writing your symptomology referring you out to get any secondary issues or you know anything like that taken care of if they're not taking care of you change the doctor and if you're only going through va change that up so hey fast forward so 
solution. I did my research, did my education. And I was able to put together a nice, articul well articulated personal statement, buddy statements as well. I had my diagnosis. I had pulled all of my complaints, x rays, and MRIs from the time I was serving in the military, in the military Marine Corps, or, uh, as well as my current treatment along with newer MRIs as well. Um, capturing that, hey, I've always had sciatica, radiculopathy, and my lower extremities. So whenever I submitted that claim, that supplemental, I submitted it with that initial lumbosacral strain, low back pain, as well as to include secondary disabilities, uh, ridic radiculopathy in both lower extremities. Uh, fast forward, it took about a month for the VA to immediately schedule me for a CMP exam. Uh, this past, well, last November 2023, not November, October 2023, I went in, the examiner was very good. <clears throat> I went into a compensation and pension exam over there with VES. Um, and examiner was good. They had a guyometer, you know, the tool needed to re measure range of motion. Went through the testing um, for the lumbosacral strain issues. Um, went down the, uh, the documentation. It's, it's like eight plus pages. So you're going to be in there for a while. It shouldn't be a five to 10 minute exam. My exam was about, about an hour, about 45, 55 minutes. So if you want to, if you want to gauge the timeliness and the result of your CMP exam, look at the DBQ, the Disability Benefits Questionnaire, and reflection to the questions, what de level of detail needs to go into each question, as well as that examiner. You gotta hold them accountable. So did that, as well as she tested me for the secondaries in both lower extremities. Um, and then yeah, VA service connected me for that denied that previously denied VA claim to include they added the secondaries as well. I was I was assuming that the VA was going to give me that, you know, the service connection on that denied claim back in 2017 to and roll in um, sciatica radiculopathy because at this point I seen veterans getting service connected for all three, but the VA rolled them all together versus. I guess the way my medical evidence was laid out and my personal statements, it was like, okay, yes, veteran definitely had low back pain started from a service as well as the sciatica as well. And all the medical evidence was good. It was laid out years worth of medical evidence that the VA just said, hey, you know, fuck it back in 2017. Fuck it. You know, we'll let him educate himself and then come back. So, you know, that's the difference between, you know, you know, motherfucking, uh, Going to Super Bowl or not going to Super Bowl? You gotta put in the work, put in the work, fuck it, in and out. Hey, y'all like this type of content? Definitely. <sighs> Stick around. Hey, Debo out.